uh, Vikram is uh, a fellow electric vehicle owner and uh, that's the Tata Tigor which uh, uh, he's been kind of using for the past few months. So let's start by getting a little bit of uh, Vikram's background. So Vikram, uh, I heard you've been doing car rallies. Uh, so can you tell us about your old uh, bad polluting petrol engine days? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. He loved it. <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, it is, it is a sea change from uh, what we've been doing. Uh, no, but you must talk about the rally part. We're all interested in sure, that. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. So I was, uh, I've driven the National Rally Championship for 10 years between 2010 and, uh, sorry, 2000 and 2010. Okay. And uh, in that, in the course of that time, driven various cars from right from the S team to the Ford uh, Fiesta, to the Honda City, to the Bellino, to uh, the Mitsubishi Cedia, and then later the uh, Volkswagen Polos. So yeah, we've done a bit of uh, burning fuel. So what 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 was the kind of rally route that was the popular ones which you participated in? The rally, the national championship went all across the country. Okay. Um, uh, my favorite rallies would be uh, they had rallies in Goa, in Pune, in Asik and uh, in the gravel stages in Coimbatore, they, those were, I would say, my uh, favorite rallies. So, what's the challenge in a rally? But the, what, what is it that kind of is important for you to kind of do well in a rally? Well, you need to have uh, at least one screw loose. <laughs> 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 it's, there's a lot of, lot of speed involved. There's a lot of speed and uh, a lot of uh, science behind it. So, you need to know what you're doing because one mistake can cost you a lot. Um, and even your safety. So. Uh, the, uh, yeah, there, there, there's quite a bit of risk, but um, at the same time, there's a lot of uh, lot to learn from it as well. So, tell us about your experience with cars. When there are failures in rallies, typically, what kind of are the parts? Suspension, I'm sure, must be going out for a toss quite a times when you kind of not taking the bumps right or whatever. What else usually has gone wrong in your cars in rallies? Well, yes, you're right. Suspension is a major part of a rally car. Um, apart from that, the tyres play a huge role. Uh, we keep, I mean, we go through two or three sets of tyres per rally, which is um, a yeah, lot. Yeah. Then, of course, you have your engine and transmission that uh, needs uh, a lot of reliability because you're really putting it through um, extreme limits through a long, prolonged periods, like over two, three days. So it's very easy for an engine to blow or a um, uh, transmission to give way, uh, drive shafts to go, uh, things like that. So, and today's cars, of course, the electronics also play a big role. You think uh, a Tigor or an electric vehicle will make for a better rally car than a petrol one? Well, um, I would never imagine I'd ever say <laughs> this, but uh, yes, in fact, uh, after driving the Tigor, uh, I'm so impressed by an electric vehicle that uh, it could, uh, except for the sound, um, that a rally car really is impressive <laughs> with. Uh, an electric car could really give, give any rally car a good run for his money okay. or maybe even so, quicker. So maybe hopefully we'll kind of be talking to him a few years down the line where he could talk about you know a Jaguar or some uh, Land Rover or something like that where we kind of end up doing it. Why not yeah. a Tata? Okay, next one. <laughs> Here we next go. Next one. Yeah, next yeah. One. Next one. Yeah, next it's, it's order, lovely talk. Yeah, yeah. Lovely talk. Why lovely not? talk. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you know you grew up in the OT area and you kind of stayed back over here. Uh, it's it's you know a lot of people younger people tend to migrate to cities, right? And you kind of stayed back where you grew up, and so is we for that matter. Yeah. So what's the reason, Madhav? You know how how come you kind of decided to stay the rural life and not kind of become urbanized like the rest of us? Well, I'd say I, I was no different to the uh, to, to the average uh, youngster. When I was young, I was very keen to make a life in the city and uh, run away from this jungle because life was too slow then. <laughs> and obviously, you know, you miss the city lights. Uh, but having said that, 10, 15 years down the line, uh, you one does realize that um, the jungle and nature has so much more to offer, especially considering the state of our cities today and the pollution and uh, the kind of busyness that is, is associated with city life. I think I count myself very lucky to be living in a place like this. Well, Jungle Hut was started by my parents. My dad was a tea planter and uh, when he retired planting um, in 1982, we bought this land and in 84, he moved here. And 86, Jungle Hut just, it, it wasn't a planned resort, but it became an extension of our home. We started right. off with these four rooms, the first block. And um, that has grown into what it is today uh, as a resort. Uh, we have 14 rooms as of now. Uh, and um, talking about the season, 
we are open right through the year. We don't have a, play, a time when we are absolutely closed. COVID, COVID times you may have closed down. COVID times we were completely sealed and shut. Uh, and uh, in a way, it was great because it gives us time to really appreciate the property in one sense. Mm. You know, because you, one would always imagine what would the place be without any guests. And you know, we have the whole place to yourself and we did get to enjoy it um, for, for six months last okay. uh, in the first phase. But of course, yeah. Covid has been a real uh, uh, game, you know, changer. game changer and it's damaged business a lot. Um, the best time to be here would be, um, I would say from June when the monsoons come in, right up to December, January, about this time. Mm -hmm. It's a great time. February, March, April, May dry. are kind of dry and hot, but it also happens to be holiday season for uh, schools. So we get a lot of clientele during those months as well. That's why we, we just keep open right through. And having said that, even the summers are not very harsh. We're yeah. talking about yeah. 34 degrees in the shade. That's the highest it goes to. Right. And the evenings always cool down because of the thanks to the mountains. We have a nice uh, mountain breeze that comes down. Correct. So it's it's quite bearable. In that so sense. what what I like most about this is kind of you know so many deer around your property, which is very unique to a lot of places that you've seen. So so. Uh, do you do something to attract the deer in over here? <laughs> it's just me. They come to see me. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely not. We uh, we don't have any fences. That's that's why the deer are in. We also don't have any dogs and uh, we don't allow our guests or anybody else to disturb animals or nature uh, in general. And uh, that uh, has translated into the deer making, you know, feeling safe and making this a safe haven for themselves when they come in. We don't uh, chase them out. We don't uh, attract them. We don't feed them at all. But, um, but it's just a nature's blessing, I guess. Yeah, they, they made their point by making an appearance over here. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yes. QED. <laughs> huh? yeah. So how do you get here? What's the Google location that you need to hunt for? Well, junglehut.in, that's our website. All okay. details are there. Okay. Um, and we are in the Nilgiris, uh, uh, abutting the Mudumalai Tiger Reserve. That's, that's our location. Okay. Coming to the car, uh, what was the reason for buying an electric? What was the reason for switching to electric? Well, honestly, I was looking to buy a new car and a very close friend of mine has uh, had bought a X, uh, the uh, Nexon EV and he was very impressed uh, by it and, um, you know, sometimes you need a little bit of a, of a push. Uh, uh, but I, I, we had also driven, I'd also got the opportunity to drive um, uh, the Kona EV uh, over a couple of days and I was extremely impressed with that vehicle. Right. But of course, the the price doesn't didn't really justify. But between the Nexon and the Tigor, the, the price difference is not all that much. So why the Tigor and why not the Nexon? Well, um, there are uh, it, there is a, at least about maybe four Couple or five lakhs. Okay, depending on the model, the model, entry level model, etc. Right. True. Um, so I was actually looking for the most cost effective uh, value for money uh, vehicle, which is the Tigor, and that's why I chose the Tigor consciously from the uh, from the uh, uh, Nexon. Nexon. Okay. So, uh, how many kilometers on the odometer right now? I think about 2,500. Okay, so relatively new. Yeah. So, tell me like, three, four things that you liked about the car. Well, I love the car. Uh, in fact, most of it. Um, especially driving an electric vehicle, you know, the absolutely no noise. Zen. Zen. <laughs> and the power delivery, I think, is the, is the main game changer. You know, whenever you want power, it's on tap. You just tap the accelerator and there's no power lag. There's no, you know, waiting for the engine to respond, nothing, you have power bang on, which is phenomenal. Um, uh, the regeneration is again a, a great... Uh, Especially coming down, maybe you should yes. talk a little bit about that experience of region and you're coming down Uti Ghat, because you have a house in Uti also. Yes. Right, yes, so yes. tell us about region and you're coming down. Yes, I was coming to that exactly, because that I found was the most impressive uh, feature in the uh, uh, Tigor. Um, more than regeneration, it's it's a huge safety f uh, factor. Right. Because uh, this road, the Kalati Ghat especially, it has been shut to public for about five years now. They only allow local vehicles to come down. Um, and the reason is because it's accidents. so steep mm. that brakes fail and major accidents happen. I was quite interested to see how this car performs coming down the Ghat and of course going up as well because it's a, one of the steepest sections in the south of India. Correct. Actually, auto companies come here for testing. So yes. when they've launched new vehicles, this is one of the ghats that kind of the testing happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lots of vehicles are being tested up and down. So um, I drove the car down, and uh, I think there was about 63% charge when I started the the top the of top. the climb here yeah, mm -hmm. and started descending, and it drove absolutely normally. 
I think the first thing that really hit me was I was hardly using the brakes because mm. the 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 descent was the steep. gradient was very steep. I mean, uh, yeah, you you you're climbing about two thousand meters in eleven kilometers. So yeah, so two thousand in eleven no, kilometers is no, fifteen sixteen percent gradient, almost. Yeah, yeah two by eleven. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, coming down. That's the first thing that hit me was the brakes. I was hardly using the brakes, and I could see the regeneration was going up to full. So obviously the uh, regeneration system was working very well. Yeah. And from 63% um, of the top, when I reached the bottom, it was 74. Okay. So, so 11%. Matter, yeah. Wow. So in a matter of 11 kilometers, it actually recharged 11 uh, percent. Right. And uh, then from the bottom of the Ghats to here is another 12 kilometers. And there is a there, there are mountains. It goes the roads go up and down as you would have uh, experienced. Right. And by the time I reached Jungle Hut, it was down to 64, 65 percent. So you actually increased by two percent. So basically, the journey. the journey from Kalati, I mean Lorca, Talakunda to Jungle Hut, uh, added two percent. <laughs> you know, so it was an energy free run, which was I mean mind blowing. Was okay, now really now let's hear the flip side. What about the journey on the top? How much does that consume? Yes, the flip side on consumption, yes, but the flip side on <laughs> driving um, pleasure was it's immense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's so beautiful. So, so when going you do the reverse journey, how how many uh, percentage points does it consume? So um, it it uses about thirty three percent from here right up to Uti. Okay. Which is, uh, I guess it's 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 okay because yeah, it's, it's a okay. very steep climb. Yeah, and I wasn't exactly driving up slowly. I think I had it on sport mode for most of the climb. Oh, okay. okay. Because uh, the car is a lot more responsive in sport okay. mode. Okay. And of course, I was only going to Uti and coming back. So I gave it some uh, pedal, as they would say. Yes. And it it just it went up like the breeze. Okay. It was phenomenal, uh, much better than any petrol engine, turbocharged engine, anything. I mean, it's it's really a pleasure to drive. Well, for one, I think uh, for starters, um, the wheel size from 14 could go to 15. Okay. I have put 16 inch on these uh, on this car. Oh. I, I put the 16 inch rims and uh, tires. Okay. I think it's slightly oversized. 15 would be ideal. Okay. 14, I feel, is a little too too small. small. Okay. Um, in terms of the uh, inside space, perfect. I mean, really impressive the way this car has come out and put together. It's excellent. Uh, regeneration. The regeneration option right now it's it's automatic. It's regeneration for in, anybody who drives it. But I would uh, really choice, like choice a choice to have a manual regeneration mode where I can switch it off. Switch it on and have a have a control on the on the paddle or or a, a button system correct, correct. where we can use the regeneration to slow the car down as much as we'd like it to, okay. because that can then translate into using the brakes a lot less and increasing increasing the efficiency of the car a lot more. So what what happens in other vehicles is you can set regen levels to low, mid, high, and when you're doing it at high, it's doing the same function as your pedal. It's kind of uh, maybe I'm asking for a bit too much, but considering India is what it is. And uh, getting power recharging stations is going to be is going to take uh, you know some time for it to really have a good network. Yeah. And to make the car user friendly, I would suggest if possible have a very very small engine factor into the car, like with a two liter tank, a small 25 cc or 50 cc engine, uh, with a power point, with the 15 amp power point. But if you get stuck anywhere, just you know fill up start the, the thing, start up the generator. Kind of, uh, plug in your car, relax for a couple of hours, let it recharge. Mm. Either that, if it can be factored into the car, I think nothing like it. Mm. It'll really uh, work well. If not, have an accessory that a customer can buy, which is a very small generator mm. that can be kept in the back of the car, which we can remove from the car and start it up. Uh, just just to to uh, that generates enough power for that 15 amp plug. Mm. So even if it's a slow charge, no worry. Spend a couple of hours on the roadside. Let it charge up 15, 20. Talk about the journey from Chennai to Masanguri. Uh, the people at Tata gave me a couple of apps to download uh, that would uh, locate uh, recharging stations. Right. Um, once I realized that the uh, the range is quite susceptible to how much you know throttle you you put down, you cut down speed. then I, I I cut down the speed and uh, we recharged at one point about 150 kilometers or 100 kilometers out of Chennai, and. Uh, then it showed me a place about uh, 100 or 150 kilometers away. It did show on one of the other apps. I think it was Map My India. Mm -hmm. Showed some charging station uh, in a village about um, one and a half hours away. Okay. So I decided to uh, Take give a it. Risk yeah, game. I know we had enough charge to go for you know 150 plus. So I, I went for it. Mm -hmm. I just about reached that location and there was no charge. 
It was a petrol pump. Okay. It was from there to the next charging station was about 60 kilometers. Oh, okay. And we were, I think, somewhere around, I'm not sure, I think the 30, 25, 30% mark. Ah. So I literally crawled, crawled with my and okay. said all the prayers in the world because what are the options? I mean, if you okay. do run out of juice, okay. what okay. are the options? You yeah, have to get yeah, a tote. Yeah, That's the only yeah, way. That's right. So I'm busy calling the Tata guys in uh, Chennai saying, listen, Get a tow truck ready. I might yeah. need it. Okay. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. Okay. So that was a little stressful. But um, you managed to reach. I managed to reach. Forty kmph. AC off. I think I had eight percent or seven percent left. Okay. And I think below below ten percent, it goes it into goes the fail safe to, mode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But until then, it was great. You know, 60, 70 with a very quarter throttle managing correct, it. Correct, correct. Uh, it was quite an experience. So then uh, we it, it took about an hour and a half to charge to about 70-80%. I did one charge there and then reached Salem, okay. by which time it was already uh, sundown. So uh, although I planned to make it, you know, a non-stop journey to, to Uti, I decided to uh, not take a chance. Oh, okay. So we plugged it in and all lights came green and started charging. So we shut the car, went to sleep. I got up in the morning and it didn't charge. So yeah, you learn the hard way, right? So I woke up all ready to make this bolt to <laughs> Avinashi, do a charge and then come up the hill. And here I was, the car is not charged. Yeah, so then I went, yeah. Yeah, so then we went to, to the uh, Tata dealer in uh, Salem, charge where he had a plug-in. Mm. Of course, it's a little bit of a handicap because when you're used to driving over 100 kilometers an hour, this to get good so mileage 60, out of this car, mm. no, not 60, 80. 60 to 80 is great. Okay, okay you get good. Um, uh, it's it's got also got a lower coefficient of drag compared to the Nexon, so that way you get a pure more range out of the same distance. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we reached Avinashi, and um, I break there for. Uh, I wanted to get it up right up to 100, but then after 90, for some reason the charging is very, down. very it slow. It slows down. So I think 91 percent or something. I said, okay, fine. I bit the bullet, and uh, drove all the way to Metapalium and uh, it was about 65% uh, there yeah. and I had the cl hill to climb 45 kilometers of guard section to Uti and uh, reached without a problem. So oh, by the way, there is a fast charger at Metupalem now, yes. you know that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I spoke to somebody, they told me there's a charger there, mm -hmm. but I saw 64 and I said it should be enough and okay. uh, it, it, it was enough. Okay. So <laughs> it was a great drive up the hill okay. and that's when, that was my first guard section uh -huh. going uphill uh -huh. uh, in the in the, ta in the Tigor and I just loved it. <laughs> wow! Because so this is this is as much of an adventure as your uh, rallies. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, A different could, kind of that. adventure. You could say that, right? Yeah. But as much of an adventure. So so things have changed a little bit, Vikram, since that time, and a lot more chargers have coming up. Xeon itself, for example, has got about 34 chargers. And uh, we know of people who've done Chennai to it in a single day. That is possible now. But anyway, uh, we need uh, the spirit of adventure in people like you. Right, so we have two young friends who just joined us and I'm going to ask them their names. So young friend number one, what's your name? Kiara. Huh? Kiara. Kiara. Okay, and what's your name? Ila. Ila. And have both of you also driven in this electric car? Yes. You like it? Yes. Is it better than the petrol one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's a scripted answer I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about service, so we have obviously not had too much of service issues right now, but uh, how do you plan to go about doing that? Uh, well, yeah, I haven't sent it for service yet, although I picked up the car from Chennai, hmm. uh, the closest service for me would be in Uti. Oh, there is a service? There is a Tata okay. um, um, dealer there, Okay. so I am hoping I will be able to get service, I haven't checked yet. But if not um, Uti, then Mysore, Mysore is 100 kilometers from here, so and we go there quite often. Okay. So I think that's also in range. So this is uh, Vikram and family signing off and uh, coming from a rally car driver, uh, praising the electric car. Uh, I think there's a lot going for the EV uh, industry in future. So thank you very much, Vikram, for allowing us to come here and spend time. And uh, I look forward to rallying in this car or the next one someday with you. Yeah? Lovely. I look forward to that too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Safe journey. I know. It's for the camera. <laughs>